Hey guys, even here, the Arnold Classic 2023 is over and your champion is, as expected, Samson Dauda, who absolutely destroyed this show. He killed it, man. He looked amazing. He brought his absolute best. His combination of shape, conditioning, muscularity was just overwhelming, if you ask me. One of the more impressive physiques that I saw in a while. He has the height, he has the aesthetics, he has the small waist. He has great symmetry, he's overall very complete and now he finally brought good conditioning in combination with the fullness and everything. I mean his career just skyrocketed ever since he started working with Milos. He leapfrogged a couple of bodybuilders at this show, he surpassed Nick Walker, he surpassed Big Remy and the question is did he surpass Derek Lunsford? and Hari Chopin, I mean, we don't know, if these guys competed, would he beaten them too, is he gonna win the Mr. Olympia, how much will he progress until the Mr. Olympia, and what he's gonna do at that show, that's the question now, if you look at this show, if you look at the comparison of the top three, you will realize that Samson really didn't win any of the poses, like, there are poses that Andrew Jack won in this top three, there are poses that Nick Walker won, but I don't think there are any poses that Samson won, actually. However, overall, he was the most complete guy. His structure was just phenomenal, his shape is beautiful, his conditioning was very good, and if you try to make an argument that Andrew Jack should have won because his shape was prettier, you would be right, his shape was prettier, his stomach looked better, Samson had a little bit of a distension maybe, and his abs are divided in the middle, that linea alba is a little bit bigger, like Ronnie Coleman for example, so maybe in that regard, and maybe because his lats are a bit higher, you could argue that Andrew Jack was a little bit more aesthetic, but it was not a big difference, like Samson is very very aesthetic, however, in terms of thickness, Samson is much much thicker, much bigger than Andrew, and you could see that, especially in the side poses as well, in the back poses, but now if you say Nick was supposed to win because he was more muscular, he was thicker, sure, he was a bit more muscular, a bit thicker than Samson, especially in the side and the back poses, yeah, okay, but as far as structure, Samson destroys him, so he destroys Andrew in terms of thickness, he destroys Nick in terms of shape and structure, and even though he doesn't really win any poses, he just doesn't have that many flaws. The other guys have much bigger flaws, and that's why Samson wins deservedly. I think he absolutely killed this show, and I love the fact that he won, because I want to see those kind of aesthetic-looking physiques dominate the bodybuilding, because what would bodybuilding haters have to say now? I mean, yeah, I compete in classic, but I prefer bodybuilding, I'm doing classic because I don't have the genetics for bodybuilding, I love bodybuilding way more than classic, and those guys that are in classic but are saying, I wouldn't want to compete in bodybuilding because look at what bodybuilding is today, and they would point to the physiques like Nick Walker, as Arnold Schwarzenegger would say, bottle-shaped physiques, what would those guys say now, when you see Samson, Andrew Jacked, when you see Derek Lansford, even Hari Chopin dominating the bodybuilding scene, they have nothing to say, bodybuilding, open bodybuilding is going in the right direction, and also that argument that classic physique is gonna take over open bodybuilding really doesn't make sense anymore, why would it? Like open bodybuilding is way more impressive, and the guys now, as you can see some of the guys like Samson, also have the aesthetics, they don't look horrible, they don't look disgusting, they are not just mass monsters, they have the flow of the physique, they are well shaped, and I love that. Now, let's go over some of the things that kind of surprised me, and potentially surprised some of you, so the first thing that I already started talking about is Nick Walker not winning this show. I wanna say something that I didn't wanna start the video with, or I didn't wanna put it in a thumbnail in the title, because I don't want people to think that I'm doing this for attention, I just really feel like this, so I follow other bodybuilding outlets, many of them, like mo most of them, all of them, and so I watched Nick Strachan Powers video on the pre-judging of the Arnold Classic, and I also watched Nick Trigilis video. Now, I, I have certain things that I dislike about both of these guys, I don't really like them too much, 
But I have to say, when it comes to commenting shows, Trigili is on a whole different level. Like, Nick's strength and power really doesn't understand bodybuilding at all. Like, his argument was Nick Walker is gonna win this show because of hamstrings. What the hell was that? What the hell that meant? I mean, this guy, Nick Strength and Power, he doesn't really have the passion for bodybuilding. He never really done it on a, on a high level. I mean, I'm not a professional, but I do compete at a high amateur level. Trigili was a pro, so he, when he talks about bodybuilding shows, he really knows what he's talking about. And Nick Strength and Power has no idea, really. So I think, I mean, he's doing news and everything like that, so that's good. He's doing a great job with that, but when it comes to commenting shows, predicting the outcome and trying to comment what is happening on the stage, he really has no clue. And he is one of those guys that were surprised with the outcome he had Nick Walker winning. I mean, I don't blame him for that. I could see an argument. I mean, Nick was really massive and even more conditioned than the Mr. Olympia. But he had some issues on that stage, especially because of that conditioning. Because he was more conditioned, he lost some fullness, especially in the legs. His legs looked super, super flat, especially standing next to Samson, whose legs were super sweepy, super popping. And I think that was the main reason why Nick lost. And also, a couple of poses like front lat spread, where you could actually see that he has horrible shape, horrible structure. As Arnold said, bottle-shaped physique, unfortunately. I'm a huge fan of Nick. I follow his YouTube channel, I used to love to listen to him when he was in Fuad Abiyad's podcast, I think he's a phenomenal bodybuilder, a freak, a mess monster, but when it comes to beating Samson, I definitely didn't see that happening. In my eyes, Samson was winning this show, I wasn't sure about Andrew versus Nick, I could have seen Andrew even beating him because of that beautiful shape, but because of thickness, he was definitely way behind because he was not big enough, hamstrings and back and overall size needs to come up with Andrew if he wants to beat guys who are much bigger than him. But as far as Nick winning the show, I definitely didn't see it that way. I thought it was pretty obvious that Samson has got this in the bag and so he won. So Samson won, Nick was second, Andrew was third and the next result was also kind of interesting. It was expected, I thought it was gonna be this way, I said it in my video. Big Remy beat Sean Clarida. Was that supposed to happen that way? Yeah, I, I, I think so. I think Remy was improved enough. He was better than the Olympia quite a bit, especially from the back. He was more conditioned, he wasn't holding water, he was fuller, he was bigger overall. He fixed the dents in the quads, he fixed the bumps in the glutes, stuff like that was definitely improved. Sean was phenomenal, I mean, he was super conditioned, super full, but he was just, you know, way out of his league, because these guys were just much, much bigger, especially Big Remy, and because of that, because of a huge difference in size, he didn't beat Big Remy, however, he did place in the top 5 in his first Arnold ever, and this Arnold, man, this Arnold is like, you know, very close to the Mr. Olympia, without Hadi Chopin and Derek Lansford and Brandon Curry, like you had all the top guys, really, and all of them were better than they were the Mr. Olympia, maybe I said from Nick Walker, Nick was more conditioned, but he was fuller and rounder than the Mr. Olympia, so I preferred that look over this one, but Andrew and Samson both were much improved, and I think Bonac was better, I think uh, Big Ramy was better, so what Sean Clarida accomplished at this show was just phenomenal, I don't think it was supposed to be different, I did not see him beating Big Remy, but you could make an argument, it was very very close if you ask me, though I thought maybe, just maybe, Bonac could beat Sean Clarida, and they actually were in a call out, they were standing one next to another, and I thought it was very very close, I thought maybe Sean looks better in most of the poses, but then again Bonac is bigger, However, he's not that much bigger, Rami is just much, much bigger, and that's why he beat Sean, and Bonek is, however, a former 2-12 competitor, so he's also a shorter guy, however, Sean beats him, and also, very surprisingly, if you ask me, Akeem Williams also beats William Bonek. how do I feel about that? I did not see that, I really didn't think so. I thought it was much closer between Bonek and Sean than it was between Akim and Bonek. 
The only argument that I could make for Akeem beating William is the structure, once again, and it seems like that's why he beat him, he had a smaller waist, better retaper, from behind, it wasn't even close, man, honestly, like, Bonac was so much better in that back, in those glutes and hamstrings, from the front, if you ask me, it was very close, it, I thought, at least I thought Bonac was beating Akeem even from the front, but that was closer, the only argument that I could make for Akeem beating Bonac is the V-taper, the overall structure, the shape of the physique, and if that is the case, then good, I mean, I love shape, I love seeing shape being awarded, and if that is the case, then I guess okay, but even though I do appreciate good structure, good shape, I still want to see the best overall bodybuilder win, and I thought that was Bonek, I thought he was just overall better, but apparently I was wrong, if you guys see why Bonek lost, why Akeem beat William Bonek in this show, tell me in the comment section down below, because I am having a hard time understanding this one. And it's actually even harder for me to understand why last place was Patrick Moore. How the hell did this guy end up placing dead last? Why did Justin Rodriguez and Kamal Gardney beat him? Honestly, I have no clue. I guess my argument that the judges were awarding shape and structure more than everything else in this show doesn't really make sense now because Justin Rodriguez has beaten... Patrick Moore, I could see Kamal beating Patrick, because he was really conditioned, and he was just really superior from the back, and overall, like, he was, he has that grainy, granite look, you know, he's really known for that crazy maturity of the muscle, so I could see Kamal beating Patrick, he also has, like, decent aesthetics, but Justin Rodriguez, man, I mean, he was, he was the worst guy this show for sure, not just talking about the structure, if you talk about structure, like, it doesn't get much worse than Justin Rodriguez, but also, as far as, you know, peaking, as far as conditioning, like, he was a blob of muscle and that's it, I did not see him beating anybody at this show, I know Patrick's legs are his biggest downfall, they're definitely not great, but is that the only reason? Is that why Justin beats him? Because of the legs? Maybe because of, like, overall size? I think the judges made a mistake with that one. I mean, I wasn't there, I wasn't in the front row, I didn't see it live, but I think even the photos are showing that it was quite clear that Justin was supposed to be last place in this show, and definitely not Patrick Moore, but it is what it is, that's the outcome, I trust the judges, I don't know what they were looking at, what they were looking for, but, you know, I guess I'm wrong, you guys can try to explain to me why did this happen, but I just don't see it, I don't understand it. Anyways, overall, a very interesting show, very, very high caliber of a show, like, it was almost as good quality-wise as the Mr. Olympia, because these guys, the top guys were improved, like, Big Ramy, like, Samson, like, Andrew, and Sean Clarida was there in the open, maybe you would say that this show was even better than Mr. Olympia, and also the fact that there were only 10 guys, I think it's better, I think it's better when you have less competitors, 36 competitors than Mr. Olympia, that was way too many guys, way too many, so I think this is a better setup, uh, still at the Mr. Olympia, I would like to see more guys, like 16, 17, maximum 20 guys, but not 36, so, like, once again, overall, it was a great, great show, I love the fact that Samson won, that this kind of physique won, you know, great structure, great shape, great aesthetics, great posing as well, beautiful muscle bellies, overall a very very impressive and like a physique with not many flaws without anything to criticize him on really like sure he could be more conditioned the glutes could be more dialed in the back could be bigger wider but other than that everything else was just outstanding man what a physique what a phenomenal physique it was a great show guys, if you enjoyed my coverage of the Arnold Classic, please subscribe for more bodybuilding content like this, and stay tuned for more Arnold Classic videos, we're gonna talk about this show a little bit more, and then we're gonna move on to whatever else is happening in the bodybuilding world, so guys, once again, stay tuned, subscribe, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, thank you so much guys for watching, all the best, and bye bye.